Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here. Uh, leaving the office, headed to uh, the gym. It's been a long day, voice is about shot. But <clears throat> I wanna talk to you about something that is on my mind. Uh, but before I forget, uh, don't forget to show some love and support uh, for the work we do at the Odyssey Project. If you are familiar with what we do with our programs and you believe in what we do, the hard work, the research center, um, which I head obviously, uh, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage, which I designed and created uh, to help deal with African-American adolescent, young adult male violence, criminality, and incarceration. Uh, the Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, uh, which is my wife's uh, baby uh, that I help with, and many other programs. If you believe in the work we're doing and have been doing for 20 years now, go to the description box and see how you can support the work that we do. On that note, <clears throat> uh, let's talk about uh, the mindset of blacks in America and how the mindset of blacks in America work against black liberation, black progress, black empowerment. It's one thing to talk about black empowerment. It's one thing to even have an idea of what black empowerment entails and what it will be required to achieve it, but uh, one thing that we are going to have to do is come to an understanding that no strategy will be effective if our heads are in the wrong place, if we don't have the right mindset, uh, the right state of mind. And right now we focus on things that are literally in diametric opposition to what we should be engaged in. I'll give you a prime example. We are more focused on and we give more energy to a fight that took place in church. Uh, you know, the number of posts that I observe and study, you know, and, and are aware of t talking about Marcus, who is the guy who teed off on one of the associate pastors at a church during a sermon. And the thing is, not only are people posting about it and talking about it, but if you go down and you actually look at the threads, you know, because I, 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 I am a student of human behavior. It's my life's work, it's what I do. Not only for the black community, but for a living, it's what I do. And so I'm always interested in what drives people. And the amount of detail outside of what could have been seen in that video shows the amount of energy and effort people have to invested in defining out what went wrong, what went on in that. Now, you know, fights have happened in church since I was a kid. I've seen them. Uh, you know, if you're uh, a person that's a part of a church, obviously it's not something that you want to see. But growing up as a kid, you know, I saw my first fight at church between adults. Um, and it, it, it comes from a lot of different places. And, you know, obviously those of whom you know me know uh, I'm a very strong person of faith and spirituality, but me and the church have had uh, some very intense moments. And so I don't deal with that a whole lot. Now I still speak when invited. Uh, but the whole religious thing, I, I turned to loose a long, long time ago. Uh, but, you know, I still teach uh, in a number of different ways to people who want to listen, but that's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is, why are we so focused on the negative? Why are we drawn to the sensational? Why can we be so easily misdirected away from the things that are truly empowering us. 
why do we find the things that will actually help us boring? You know, this isn't a new thought. Dr. Amos Wilson had the same thought. Dr. Amos Wilson had the same thought. And when I first heard him say it, when I first read it uh, from him, I'm like, man, that's so true. You know, you considered boring, you considered uh, weird, you considered a bunch of things when your focus is on the things that are uh, empowering, when your focus is on the things that are elevating, when your focus is on the things that can actually move you somewhere. You're looked at as if something is wrong with you. We are more uh, focused on what will make us laugh, what will entertain us. Don't get me wrong. I am far from some person that sits around serious all the time. Uh, like I've told you before, my wife has always said, man, if these people knew just how crazy you were, it would blow their minds. You know, I'm the cat in the house, always cracking jokes. I'm messing with everybody, antagonizing everybody. I'm the person my grandson runs to when he gets over the house. We got, you know, this unbelievable relationship. And that's because, you know, I, I'm, I'm about having fun, laughing talking crazy, doing everything else. And one of the things that I did over the holidays, you know, despite me not personally being a big person when it comes to Christmas, my family embraces it. My wife has a reason for embracing it. And, and, and I support my wife 100% and I love her uh, because there are so many other things that we are A1 on and I get it. And so I go hard in the pain and loving her. But my whole thing is family and love. Everybody in the same space, loving on each other, laughing, no beefing, all that. If that's what it takes to get that and experience that moment, I'm good for it. So, but but I took that time off. That's why you saw no post. That's why you saw nothing of me uh, over the weekend posting on anything of any significance. Why? Because that was me taking time to get from underneath the heaviness. I even had a person who I've done, who interviewed me before, who is considering maybe uh, becoming a client at some level. And one of the things that she said when, when, when uh, doing our consultation today is, I heard you mention on one of your videos that you are literally considering leaving the U.S. and going somewhere and, you know, and, 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 and just, you know, spending the rest of your life there, you, you know, and I say, that's not just talk, you know, that's what my wife and I are considering looking at the current conditions of where we are, what's going on. And it's not me growing weary of the war. It's me growing weary of my people not taking the war serious. It's me growing weary of my people not appreciating the work that so many warriors are putting forth to give us a fighting chance and to look at what I've given over the last 30 years, you know, as an individual in the last 20 years as the head of the Odyssey Project. It is frustrating. And so, yes, we are seriously uh, scouting places to retreat to. Doesn't mean that I'll stop working, but the manner in which I work will be different. I, you know, I won't be in communities anymore because I won't be here. Because there's only so much of yourself you have to give. And what you give to, you want to see it blossom. You want to see your seeds planted on fertile soil. You want to see the fruits of your labor. And when you look up and you see that you're planting and somebody's uprooting, or you're planting and somebody's starving the soil, or, you know, and just so many different things that are reflective of the way we are as a as a collective in our mindset is just to the point where, okay, when I've come to the conclusion that it's not going to happen in my lifetime, and I don't mean complete liberation, I just mean a reversal of affairs to where we are actually starting to move. And some might say we've already begun that. And 
you know, some might say it for a number of different reasons. But my wife and I are seriously committed. It's not something that we're going to be doing in the next year or two. At least not at this particular point. But if something gets really crazy and it's just like, hey, look, we get that last kid close to being out. And then it's like, hey, we can go and we can do what we do from remote locations. I can write books, do lectures, and put up content on the internet from anywhere. That's not where my biggest impact happens. That's what most people see. My biggest impact happens in what I do in the community, but that takes so much out of you. And you're not seeing anything. You're not getting the support. You're not getting anything, but you look up and somebody posts a fight somebody talks about some crazy thing that's going on and it takes off and it gains fire and it becomes the hot thing and you see just how easily it has been for those people to distract us and miss 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 uh direct us and point us away from uh opportunities to advance ourselves it has to stop you know, it has to stop. And, and I'm just at that point where, you know, I'm not, you know, 20 years old anymore. I'm not 20 years old anymore. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not 30 or 40 years old anymore. You know, I've been doing this a while. And I want what I do to matter. I'm, uh, you know, I've said this many times that the first half of my life was about me. You know, what I could accumulate, what I could have, what I could do. And I did it. I did it. I went hard in the paint. Uh, but the second half of my life has been about my legacy. And my legacy matters to me. But I don't want to destroy myself in building my legacy. I want to build my legacy and I want to grow old in the process. I don't want to be crushed under the pressure of the suffering of my people because my people won't get it. Now, if we were waging war and it was solely against the enemy and my people were lit behind the idea of fighting for freedom, I'd die gladly on the front lines. But I can't be fighting people that my people, I can't be fighting a system, let's put it like that. I can't be fighting a system that my people are still hell bent on being a part of. That my people easily succumb to the mechanisms and machinations of. You know, it, it simply isn't a wise um, course of action, is the way that I'll put it. So, with that being said, you know, I hope my people eventually get it. I really do. Because. I want to do something um, beyond phenomenal. And we have the ability to do it. We're just not on the right page right now. We are minoring, I mean, we're majoring in minor stuff. And it shows. Look, I've made it to the gym. I'm going to get out of here and get this workout in with what energy I have left. But we have to do better. Um, and. I'll be back to talk to you some more about some more things, maybe even later on today. But as for now, I'm about to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable uh, remainder of your day. I'm out.